Hey right bags, it's Jade with my, I guess, semi preview, review of the stress test and of course Nightingale. A few weeks out from release, what you're seeing or what you saw from the stress test is absolutely the core functions, the core gameplay that you'll be experiencing on the 22nd of February when Nightingale hits. Of course, Templat though, that usually stress tests are builds that can be up to a month, maybe even longer old, and certainly some things that you saw, I'm sure will be improved upon for early access release. And remember, it will be an early access title. I'm saying that now because I don't wanna come across as too harsh if I do have some criticisms, but don't worry, don't panic. I'm absolutely in love with Nightingale and some of the stuff that I've seen. I've been playtesting it for over a year and a half behind secretly closed doors and giving lots of feedback to Inflection directly, but now I'm really telling you about what I feel about the game as it gets closer to its actual early access release. And the best bit, I can actually show you gameplay from that stress test. I ended up streaming for six and a half hours, probably the longest stream I've done in ages. So please go and check it out if you want to see the whole thing. Today though, we're going to be focused on the very start of the game and pretty much crafting and base building and what I really think about the systems. Honestly, this video is going to be way too long if I didn't try and separate it. So part two will be all about the realms and exploration and the realm cards, points of interest and what you can expect. And part three will be about combat and enemies and that kind of mechanics. But I'm really excited. 22nd of February, Nightingale's coming out and I am absolutely hyped for it. So blah, 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 make sure you subscribe, blah, 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 leave a like and watch me skip the character customization. I know people probably want to see some of this, but I was more interested in trying to get as far as I could within the stress test. The Mass Effect series was the last time I ever cared or spent too long on actually making my character look like something I wanted to see. After that, a quick intro with the trailer giving you a flavour of what to expect and boom. This stress test gave us a 10 hour head start effectively with the kind of gear and crafting options that you would hopefully maybe have got by then and probably a little bit more to be honest. So let's jump into the crafting and the deep crafting that this game will have. Basically everything's got a gear score and it contributes. So even resources, once you look at them, they've got certain properties that can then be crafted into obviously your weapons, your armor, and they will then give your armor and weapons something actually really unique. It reminds me of MMOs in that way. You're not just making a uncommon you know, pickaxe or a uncommon gun. Instead, it will be uncommon, but it then gonna have its own separate properties depending on what you've used. So some gems that you find later, they may give you maybe ice damage, other gems will give you fire damage. Again, nothing extraordinary if you've played a lot of MMOs and deep crafting games. But I don't think I've seen one to the extent like Nightingale, where literally every resource counts to giving you some sort of buff or boon and that individualism that when you've crafted it, it really is unique. Once it's crafted, it then becomes more traditional like you're used to seeing different colors signify how kind of rare it is or how powerful it could be like uncommon. And I'm guessing eventually we'll get to blues and purples eventually rather than just green. And all of this is just filled with stat upon stat to give you a really, really good breakdown of exactly what kind of damage outputs or defense your armor and weapons are gonna do. Now this might not actually be for everyone. Some people really actually prefer a bit more simplistic look. You don't wanna spend your whole life in inventories. You just wanna craft something that hopefully is gonna be better than the last armor set that you had. So let's use the whatever materials are gonna get me there. So there is a balance here in having too much kind of information to have to pour through to making your choices. And I feel like sometimes it could be done a little bit easier by showing us or highlighting more what a particular resource is really good at quickly. And this boils down to even fibers. You'll come across fiber that has got a rarity and then you've got more fiber that will be much higher quality fiber and they will give you different properties or slightly bigger properties which will result in better armor but it'd be nice if it could give you a quick heads up of what this focus really is. Is it going to give you more fire damage? Is it going to give you more cold damage? A bit late running in the game you kind of get that a hint of that maybe with some of the crystals and gems that you can mine like amethyst gives you protection against like miasma and then there was other gems that were giving you more protection like rubies and it was associated with fire so that kind of stuff i still think needs to be made much more obvious at first glance when you're looking at some of the stuff in the inventory menus it's fair to say the inventory and the ui has probably been the big criticism i've seen since the stress test and to be honest, quite a bit all throughout the playtest. Inflection have tried a bunch of times to really take a look at it and show and shorten it and make it a bit more interesting, which they've done. It's definitely a lot more simpler than it was. 
I think the inventory screen is actually really good now, more or less, but certainly there are still some bits and bobs that you can have. Like I said, them quick glances at looking at something to tell you what kind of rarity or what kind of damage output it might have, whether it's gonna be elemental or health giving or stamina giving at first glance, rather than having to pour through stats a lot of the time. I say this because like I said, every resource has its own attributes to it. So it does become a bit overwhelming when literally fiber has got some different elements to it or different properties. To me, they feel like almost an MMO. You know, you hear these tales from devs and people that sound like we want people to have these job roles. We want people to be able to be the best armorer, be the best weapon maker, the potion maker, and they use the best resources or these are the guys that you can go to. And these people in your clans, your guilds, will be the people that do this job pretty much 24 seven. This is what this level of crafting is appealing to, but of course, Nightingale isn't an MMO. It's a one to six co-op player game for now. So it's pretty incredible there's this amount of minute detail going into the crafting options. I think a lot of survival fans are going to really love it. I do think there is a portion of people that will find it a little bit inaccessible. Or maybe they just won't care or take too much attention and just be hoping and focusing on seeing something that says crude versus fine. Then they'll know obviously to use the fine materials first if they want to get the best armor or weapon set. But for sure, definitely needs more visual ways to show that at first glance in the inventory when you're actually looking. Or of course, the simpler option, just to add some auto functions sort in so that you can sort it by, uh, you know, re levels or refinery so that stuff does appear near the top or in the right order when you click on the button. I'm still not a big fan of some of the fonts in the game. I don't mind most of the writing. It's just the numbers. Although it tells you it's like 69 or 39, that's kind of level, that's the gear score. I just find it still a little bit unreadable. Um, I know it's the style, it's the art look of the game. It's meant to be set in you know, the 19th century, etc. And it's not the end of the world, but I still think it could be just a little bit more brighter, bolder and slightly clearer by just having a slightly different font. So that's just the bare basics and we're like seven minutes in of crafting. Obviously you can see a huge amount of benches here. I was just really focused on unlocking as many as I could. A lot of these kind of are like Valheim where you'll get additions. So they increase and give you more recipes and they're calling them augmentations. So these are like extra benches or sometimes more refined benches that will then give you extra recipes. I love this and again this is something that a lot of people might really love and I think hopefully most will but there will be some people that feel like they don't want to have 20 crafting benches in their base. Eventually you can get rid of some of the older ones as the more refined versions will obviously have the same materials that you'll be able to craft. I think this is amazing. It's like back in the day when you was a, you know, a young person, I'm not going to say a kid because I was in my 20s when I was playing Minecraft, but indeed when you was going to build your little cozy house, you're going to have a little farm, you're going to have your little blacksmith and you would make it really detailed and that's what you can do in Nightingale. You can go ahead and make a carpentry workshop because there'll be three or four or five little things that kind of fit within that. You're gonna be a tailor, you've got a coat rack that you can put inside next to your loom and your tanning station. It puts almost Conan Exiles to shame in the sheer amount of different crafting benches that you'll be able to craft and unlock. These little white icons, they're basically telling you they're the augmentations that you've got for this workbench. And there are just hundreds of recipes. It's just ridiculous. Honestly, I felt like I was just playing something that was crazily big because there's so many different armor sets, so many different kinds of items to craft and make. Huge amount of components, like from like blades to nuts to bolts, really going in depth in it as well. And you'll need a lot of that to craft some of the benches and more of the higher end gear. Now I think a lot of survival fans will be like, yep, yeah, give me, I'm absolutely there for the depth. I do still think it's not gonna be as accessible to a more average, average? Well, maybe not, it's not the right word, but more casual players. And that's what we want. We want Nightingale to be accessible and get as many players playing it as it can. The last note of criticism for me is the crafting times. Some things you can craft almost instantaneously at your benches. Other things take obviously real world minutes. No issue with that greatest games going like Valheim in my opinion you gotta wait 10 minutes for all of your metal to go ahead and cook but there were some things like I was making blades or some kind of bolts and stuff and that were taking just far too long considering the size with all the different crafting options that will be in the game I don't think you need to slow things down as much with 
every aspect of crafting, smelting, or just, you know, refining. I think it was like 22 ingots that I was going to make, and it said it was going to be 55 minutes to get all 22. Bro, it's going to be the 21st century by the time that cooks. So I do hope they take a look at that, and for sure, make sure that refined station, so the upgrades to what you've got, will give you a slight reduction in the time to make some of that. And that's an easy fix for me. Or only the biggest of objects, like actually physical objects, and you know, maybe just the ingots themselves take a bit longer to make from the ore. But yeah, you are going to need a lot of space for these crafting benches for sure. This ain't rust and just upgrading your workbench and a few furnaces. You are going to have to make room for your bases. But that is also the joy in Nightingale. It's clearly focused on this. It's clearly focused on having a wonderful arrangement of base building choices. There's at least four or five different tile sets that I saw. And I do believe that I didn't actually get to see the Asian influenced one. So that's probably another one. So there might be six, maybe even seven. You're only really approaching that many different types of building materials when you factor in DLC for games like Conan Exiles or maybe even Ark. You can see from my rickety half open shack building that I was doing, you've got like the Tudor set, we've got the stone set, we've got the sand set, we've got the shack set. I know, I know, I'm not showing this off particularly great, but obviously I was streaming this and I was trying to just get as much as I could done. Builders, you are going to cream your pants to put it mildly about the building options in Nightingale. It's the blueprint system, so it is very similar to the forest and other games that use that. Simply go ahead and place, make your build how you want, design it, and then you go ahead and click the button and fill it up with the resources you've required. So you're not crafting 200 foundations or 300 walls here. It's all just about designing and planning, which gives an incredible amount of freedom Knowing you don't need to make any mistakes in building, you can just simply get rid of a blueprint and place it back exactly how you want. I've been friends with a lot of builders over the years. It's something I've enjoyed watching in different survival games and far beyond watching people actually play it. I've often watched speed builders and time-lapse builders as some of my content I like to chill out with. And when I see these kinds of features, I'm always wondering, can you meld them? Are they going to blend together? What kind of hidden mechanics can you do with them? Much maybe like Ark, where you could do a fair amount of that with abusing the system. Or is it going to be a bit more forgiving like Valheim, where pieces blend? Or even Enshrouded most recently, where the voxels really blend together i'm not expecting that obviously with nightingale it is more out of the box in terms of that blueprint and tile set just pretty much lego building but yeah the sheer choice is just i can't wait i'm really excited about actually building my estate and that's the right word that's the word that they use for your base your domain it is having an estate you are going to need lots of sized good sized buildings base to hold all your resources there is limits though. It does show like a 350 piece limit here within the stress test when I was building. And I'm not too sure if that's going to be the final limit. How much is that going to be just about being connected to one space? Will you be able to set up other cans? There's a lot of questions that need to be answered still from that. One thing I really didn't like and I'm hoping it is just a quirk from the stress test or certainly we will see more improvements as soon as early access starts is you do need to repair your base pieces. You see this hail falling, it's not there just for the look. It does hurt you, and it does look like storms and certain elements could affect your base. Now this is nothing new. Again, we've seen it in games like Ark, where your base degrades over time, and even Valheim has base degradation, depending on how, if your base hasn't been covered properly in the right roofs. It's a bit wearisome, but this is maybe a point in that the game will have base raiding mechanics in terms of enemies attacking your base. It's been pretty prevalent in a lot of the trailers or the first ones they revealed. That was in a desert sort of biome and they were kind of being, yeah, absolutely the bound were attacking them. So I presume that's the whole reason. Your base pieces have got health because you will have to maybe deal with enemies if you build on certain realms. Remember, the realms are the key part of this game, which we'll get into. But that is absolutely something you might have. If you build somewhere dangerous, then you've got to be prepared for base attacks. But it does look like you will be able to build in cozy environments too. But you will have to worry about weather and, like I said, having to go around and repair occasionally. What happened? A few walls went missing. Literally couldn't work out why. And it seemingly was due to maybe the weather. I couldn't really see any of our enemies hitting anything. I don't know, maybe it was something like that and I just hadn't noticed. So I had to get my hammer out and go around repairing and it was monotonous as fuck. I think I would prefer just going up to the can stone that you've got that sets, that sets your, your estate and just seeing, tell me what 
pieces of wood it needs. Does it need 300 pieces of wood, 200 pieces of stone to repair everything? Go ahead and do it that way. And certainly if they're gonna keep this system where you have to check on individual pieces or your base now and then, the hammer that you use has got to have much wider area of effect so that you'll be able to just literally one tap and pretty much rebuild or repair anything. It was down to effectively just not being told that my base was degrading also and I think that was a glitch to do with some of the foundations and maybe other pieces but no point do you really get told that your walls are maybe under threat or there's something that you're going to need to go and check out. Couldn't really tell visually, like degrading, like it again, like it is in Valheim, etc. So, yeah, I was left a bit wondering what the hell was going on. But again, this could be just a quirk from obviously the stress test. I will grumble a bit less if it's still in there that we do have to repair individual items. Just make it really super simple and easy for me to tell that I do indeed need to. But that was my only gripe with the building. I thought it was amazing that, like I said, the sheer amount of choices and pieces, even if you're the world's worst builder like me you're still gonna be able to make something look relatively good. So, crafting, amazing in terms of depth and the amount that you'll be able to craft all sorts of different weapons and armors that will give you all sorts of different elementals and buffs. Absolutely, the benches and stuff will give people a real focus on making a true estate, not just one box with everything inside it. Although you could do that like I did here, but I would like to see definitely, that I can't wait at least, to really get my teeth into making separate rooms, separate annexes for everything that I want to build, like my carpentry shop, my blacksmith and my kitchen. Last thing to touch on is the NPCs. As far as I know, I think the plans are that they will eventually help you do stuff around the base more. And so you could have the prospect of something, maybe similar to Conan Exiles, where NPCs will speed up production. I, I believe so. I could have got that wrong, but I think that was the vibe that I heard a few months ago. And that would explain some of the slow timers with obviously the focus on getting them. It isn't Conan though. I don't think you're going to be gathering 20 NPCs to do jobs at your base. It will very much be a case of smaller amount. And this is all stuff that I'll have to get clarified and hopefully deliver you the answers for actual early access release. If you love your detail in survival games, you love the idea of uh, MMO crafting features where you really have going to build or you're going to build like the best ice weapon ever the best armor set that's going to make you a powerful conjurer or enchanter at least of your weapons and finding them resources and combining them and making sure you've got the right ones when it gets to crafting it becomes almost like a simulation game in that aspect for more casual fans like i said i just hope there's ways to make it a bit easier to see some of that stuff quick and easy so that you know what is the best resource to make the best armor set or the best weapon the base building is on par with anything you've seen in any other survival game and absolutely exceeds in most cases. Just got to keep an eye on that limit and see how many build pieces it really equates to and what kind of bases we can construct and whether or not we can have more than one. And obviously just a bit more refinement around stuff like decay and being able to check that your base is in good standing order. And yeah, I'm going to live my best fantasy life just making room upon room with all the different features, all different crafting options, and the decorations that actually weren't included in the beta test. Apparently there was an issue with it on error, so no one got to put out loads of lamps and lights, but that is coming, and there will be a huge amount of decoration as well. So tomorrow, Realm Cards, The World, everything you need to know about that and what I experienced and where or what you're gonna be exploring. And then the third video, like I said, will be focused on combat and some of the stuff you'll be utilizing to take on enemies as well as boss fights. Until then, I'll see you rat bags later.